So these are pattern pieces for your Victorian borders. So you lay them out on the cotille. Um, the cotille's doubled. So you're cutting two pieces of each out. So the far left one is the center back. Make sure you've got room down the center back at least two inches. Um, the side panels, the two middle ones, make sure the grain line is correct. It's not necessarily following how you think. You wouldn't just line up the waist with the cross grain. So follow the, um, the two side panels, follow the grain line, and then your center front again you want to be able to leave a little bit extra. If you're doing the half, um, bodice, leave yourself a couple of inches there as well. If not, just an inch seam allowance will be fine. If you're just going to put a seam down the front. Um, the center front is also on the bias, so the two grain lines that are crossing each other, that represents the bias of the fabric. So, so make sure you have that in the correct direction. So you can see on the um, center back panel, you can see the grain line. This is the bust line and the waistline. And then the seam allowances, it's got written. So one, I'll leave one inch for all the inner ones. The center back one, leave two inches. And then the side panel. This, again, this is your bust line, waistline. These represent the boning channels. So make sure that you make them the width of the boning that you are using. So if you use a different one, I think these ones are 11 mil width, which fits our Perspex boning. So if you're using a different boning, you need to change the width of the boning channels. And then again, the seam allowance is one inch, one inch, one, and on the armhole, half an inch. And there's a little balance mark here. This, the front panel, again, bust line, waistline, channels for the boning, balance mark, so that meets that they, they all join together at that point. There's some balance marks there. And again, one inch, one inch, one inch seam allowance. And on the armhole, just put half. There's plenty. And the center front one is on the bias. So when you see a crisscross grain line like this, it means it's on the bias. So you balance this one with the cross grain and this one up and down. You have your bust point there, your waist, your waist point here. So on the center front you have a boning channel. So this would be a center front seam on this case because it's on the bias. So on your seam allowance, you'd put um, your boning channel and your bone would be divided between the two, between the center front, half on one side, half on the other. If this was on the straight, the center front, you would put a boning channel down the, dead down the center. And make sure, in this case, leave yourself a couple of inches for the center front on your uh, center front panel. And again, uh, one inch, two inches here, 
one inch, one inch, one inch, yeah. And then you would put your carbon paper underneath. So I slid my carbon paper underneath the cotille with the pattern pieces pinned to it. Make sure when you pin them, don't overdo it with the pins. Just put the corners. That's plenty just enough to hold the pattern pieces in position. So you've slid your carbon paper. I'm using red. Be careful of the colors that you use. Try use yellow because the reds and the blues tend to, they're, they're hard to get off. So if you can use yellow. I'm using red so that you can see it better. And then you need to do trace around each pattern piece pattern with your wheel. These ones are really good because they have two wheels. So you can put interesting allowance. I can wheel against the pattern piece and do it all in one go. A bit tricky doing it and filming at the same time. So if you look at the other side of it, you can see it's it's marked out both. So worth the investment. They're a little bit expensive. I think they're about six pounds. But well worth it, saves you a lot of time measuring out. So, so carbon paper out everything, and then you would cut it out. So also carbon mark your waistline. So you can see it in your seam allowance. So I've marked them there, 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 there. Mark my little balance mark so I can see it where it is. And your sorry, and your um, boning. So you can just do that either end and then use a ruler later on. Yeah, instead of trying to follow the lines. Just sort of trying to do the cap. So when you cut new pieces out, leave your fabric on the table. Don't lift it up. Don't lift it up like this and start cutting because what that does is it'll make the the top shorter than what the bottom piece is, so they won't be exact. You need to leave it laying on the table and then come along and just lift cut like that. Yeah. And then when you turn it over, so you can see all the information from the carbon paper on the other side. Yeah. So leave it, I can see my dotted lines through the top, leave your fabric on the table while you're cutting it. Yeah. So once you've cut all your pieces out in the cotille, you want to mark the other side of the cotille. So where you initially cut it out, you've got all that information on the back. So if you take your pattern piece off and just 
you put your pins in the corner so your fabric, your two layers of kitiel don't shift on you. And then flip it over and you can see all your information so you're just going to retrace it all. So just copy all the lines. Your bust and waistline, which is here, don't draw them right across. You can just do the either side. And then when you tack them later, you can just fold it and put a, a crease so you don't have a big ugly line carbon paper to cross it. So if you see you're transferring the information to the other side. So do that on all your pieces. Um, you are only making half a bodice. The left side I want you to make. So you make sure that this is your panel that we're just looking at right here. Make sure that you're doing the correct side, the left side I would like you to do so that you can see how to do the placket later on. So make sure you got the correct side because you're only cutting one side out so it's a little bit tricky figuring out which side it is because it's a bit like being in the mirror. Yeah. So once I've got the information on both sides, I now take my marked cotil, put your pattern piece back on, and I will pin it to the calico because we're going to back the silk with calico in this case because our top fabric's quite fine. So I pinned it. Make sure you got the grains correct. Follow the same grain as you did on the cotil. And then I just cut out. So I like to cut out my cotille first and then I can lay it on the calico. I've done all the information on the cotille. And then I can cut it out in the calico quickly. And what this does, you would be very minutely, because you're going around the edge bigger, just just tiny tiny bit and what that does is just a second let me finish cutting this remember to keep your fabric on the table don't lift it up to cut what this does it's it's just minutely so when you roll over when you're doing the seams you can see it slightly shortens so that that just gives you a little bit extra, just a tiny bit extra. So do that in the calico. Oops. And then here I've laid it out again on the silk and I'm going to cut the silk. So I've got cotille, calico, silk. Um, as you're only cutting one layer out, make sure you're on the correct side. And I don't like the shininess of the silk that I've got. So I want to use the dull side as my top. So there's no hard and fast rules. You don't have to use the actual top fabric. If you prefer the underside of it, you can use that as the top layer. So in my case, that's what I'm doing. So again, and pin, I pinned further into the seam allowance because I don't want to mark my silk. Because the pins can leave marks on it. So again, cut it out. Keeping it on the table. Yeah. 
it and just carry on. So do all your pieces like that. So I have my three layers. I've got my cotillo, my calico, which is backing my top silk. And what I need to do first is, first I'm gonna crease where my bust line is and my waistline. So just with the cotillo, I've lined it up the two edges and finger pressed. So I've got a line to follow when I tack my way. So you can see the, the, the crease marks. And then I want to sew these channels in. <clears throat> so just using the cotillo and the calico, I'm going to machine. And I'm going to machine from the edge of the seam allowance all the way up, across and down. So I'll do all three of them. So I pin them together and I'll take it to the machine. So I'm going to the corner, Keep my needle down, lift up, turn. I went a little bit too far there, but it doesn't matter. Needle down again, lift the foot, so turn and then carry on stitching down. So you can see I've stitched. You can see I've stitched, so if I stitched into the seam allowance, up, left my needle down, turn the corner, cross, left my needle down, turn the corner down again. <clears throat> you don't want to stop here at the edge in case later on after you're fitting in that you decide you need to lower the waist you're nothing worse than you've stopped there and then you've got to add a little bit so if you just sew right off to the edge and then you got the option to move up and down that's the reasoning behind that so you can see I've got my creases in there now ready and I will add this to my top fabric now. Pin in the seam allowance because I don't want to mark my silk. So I've got it ready and then so I'm going to tack all three pieces together now. So start in the middle, single thread and I'm just going to do big long like a chevron stitch. And I'll go down in between the boning, so I don't want to block off the boning channels. So I've, um, I've tacked down here, and then I come across, turned it round, tacked down here, and now I'm going to do this side. So not my thread. my thimble get in the habit of using your thimbles to save your fingers and I'm now doing the third side so don't want to come into the seam allowance because I'm going to tack my um, seam allowance lines next Keep 
working your way out. So there's your tucking. So you've tucked, I'm going to tuck, start that way, tuck down there, across and up, and then I come along here. So I've got three lines. So don't do loads of little lines like this. And don't do short stitches, do a couple of inch or four or five centimeter long. Cause you don't want, if you do too small of stitches, what it does, it kind of quilts it up. So big stitches and it's holding all your fabric together so it doesn't shift. So next I'm gonna mark out my waistline and my bust line. I've already done my waistline, I'll show you. So you can see it on the other side. So I like to do a smaller stitch on this side and a longer one underneath when you go through. So how I do that is you're just doing a running stitch. So just leave a small line and use a bigger stitch underneath. Small one long one underneath so use a white thread to mark your bust line waistline center front center back and You can mark your neckline in white as well if you want. And then the rest to just do in a similar colour to the fabric. I'm using contrasting colour so that you can see it on the film. So if I turn it over, you can see my line. So I've got a longer stitch here. So in between it's a little bit shorter. Yeah, and the waistline. So mark all of them on all your pieces. Mark your center back and your center front. And then we're going to mark out your seam allowances. So same thing, but use a sim I'm using green so you can see the contrast. So what I've done is, so I'm following my, I've already done up to there. I'm following my seam allowance lines around. So I like to, to do my tacking stitch for it, not on the line, beside the line into the seam allowance. So that way when you come and machine it, you machine them beside it. Because sometimes when the machine stitch catches the tacking threads down, it's really hard to get them out. So don't block off your, um, boning channels. Do a long stitch under them so you completely miss them. And again the shorter stitch here, longer one underneath and beside your line into the seam allowance. So when you come to a corner, make sure your stitch, you're going to start before it 
and come out after it so so that your long stitch underneath is crossing over the line that's um, coming from the other direction so I'm going under it yeah and then I'll come across and start on this line going up the side same and again this side of the line starting back a bit and make sure I've got a long stitch that comes out past the junction. So on the corner you should end up with a diagonal line. And then keep going. So what happens on the other side, you can see, it crisscrosses at each point. And that's what you want at every corner, all of these corners. If you've got any balance marks like here, you can just do a little, just do a couple of threads to mark it. the stitches and that's marked on the other side so do all your panels like this you don't um I've got a contrast in colors so it reads on the video definitely do white or if you were working with white you could do another color for the center front but make sure it's different from the color that you do the seam allowance so that in the fitting they're going to line up so there you need your center front your center back your waist your bust so you can position it correctly on the body yeah and make sure it's level so on your center front panel remember it's on the bias so when you cut out your calico and cut out your silk that they're also on the bias and then just on the cotille, if you get your piece of Petersham, put a crease down the center by just folding it and then just rub it along the edge of the table. And the crease will sit on the center front line. So half, half and half. So this would normally, there would be a seam there so if there's a seam there, because these are on the bias, there's a seam there. This would just get caught on the seam allowance. But in this case, because we're just doing half, we won't just mount it. Just mount it um, on so it's half and half. Yeah, and just tuck it in place. And then once you've tucked it all in place, then you can mount your pieces. Uh, you can machine it, come along and machine either edge. So if you look at this one here, it's just been machined onto the cotil only. So you just machine up either side. Yeah, so that's how you prep your centre front and then mount it to the other layers and tuck all your seam allowance. And all your other information. So do you tuck all your fabrics? Put all your boning channels in? all your panels ready for the next session. Yeah.